Good afternoon and welcome to the first statutory meeting of the Hertfordshire Growth Board Joint Committee. I'm Stephanie Tarrant, the Democratic Services Officer for the Board and will lead the meeting today until a chair has been elected. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, this meeting is being held electronically in accordance with the relevant regulations. Members of the public may also attend this meeting in an electronic capacity and there is a link on the Council's website for them to do so. I can confirm that we are currently quorum for this meeting. Members of the board are asked to keep their microphones switched off until called to speak and to switch their microphones off once they have finished speaking. Cameras may be left on throughout the meeting if members wish. If you experience connection or other technical issues, it may help to switch your camera off. Cameras should be switched on if and when speaking during the meeting. To indicate a wish to speak, members should use the raise hand function. Use of the meeting chat function is exclusively for voting. At the end of the debate on each item of business, there will be a vote. Members should vote using the meeting chat function by indicating for, against or abstain. The chair will declare the result after each vote. Breaks will be incorporated as appropriate. The first item on today's agenda is to elect a chair for the term up to the first meeting of the board that follows the 2021 local elections and the 2021 annual meeting of the constituent councils. If there is only one nomination duly seconded, that person will stand elected and take the chair. If two persons are nominated, there will be a vote and the person obtaining the greater number of votes will be elected and asked to take the chair. Please could I invite for nominations of the chair by using the raised hand function. Tony, please. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, given his excellent chair in the previous Growth Board meetings and uh, before we set up this formal committee, and I think it'd be really good for continuity if um, David Williams was appointed chair. So I'm very happy to propose David Williams to be appointed chair. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a seconder, please? Sorry, Chris, you're on mute. Of, yes, indeed. Thank you. Gosh, so so early in the meeting. Um, <clears throat> in the absence of a, a seconder from the Conservative group, uh, I'm, I'm happy to nominate. Uh, happy to second David. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other nominations at all? Oh, well. Okay. As there are no further nominations, I declare that David Williams stands elected as the chair of the Hertfordshire Growth Board. The chair will now lead the nomination process for the two vice chairs. Stephanie, thank you for that. And uh, colleagues, uh, thank you for your support. Um, I will just say at the start of this um, set this section of the meeting, I do want to welcome uh, Maurice Bright, the leader of Hartsmere Borough Council, Lewis Cocking, the leader of Borough of Broxbourne, Stephen Giles Medhurst, representing Three Rivers District Council, Linda Hazy, the leader of East Hearts District Council, Tony Kingsbury, the leader of Well in Hatfield, Martin Steers Hanscom, the leader of North Yorkshire District Council, Peter Taylor, the Mayor of Watford Borough Council, Sharon Taylor, the uh, leader of Stevenage Borough Council, Chris White, the leader of St Albans City and District Council, and Andrew Williams, the leader of Decorum Borough Council. Um, as I said, I'm David Williams and I'm the leader of Hertfordshire County Council. We're also joined by the uh, who is the co-opted member to this board. So I'm going to move to the second item on the agenda, and that is the appointment of two vice chairmen. And in accordance with Annex A to Appendix 1 of the Hertfordshire Growth Board Constitution, the board shall elect two vice chairs at its first meeting. At the time of appointing the vice chairs, the Hertfordshire Growth Board shall decide which of them takes priority if the chair is absent and both of them are present. There shall be no term limits for vice chairs. So can I invite a nomination in respect of the vice chair that will take priority in the uh, event of the chair being absent? First nominee. I think I had my hand up first, David. Yes, Martin. 
Yes, yeah, so I'd like to nominate Sharon Taylor. And I don't know if you noticed, but you promoted me up the country to the leader of North Yorkshire oh, District Council. What? I'm actually the leader of North Hertfordshire District Council. But, so I'd like to nominate um, Sharon. OK, so this is actually, as, as I understand it, Martin, this is the position that will um, not have priority. This is the second of the vice chairs. So can I have a seconder for Sharon as the second vice chair? Yes, it's Linda Hazy here. I'm very happy to uh, second um, Sharon Taylor as uh, vice chair. Thank you. OK, and in relation then to the second vice chair, the one with I have indeed, yes. I'd like to nominate Chris White for that role, please. And I'd like to second uh, that uh, nomination. Are there any other nominations? There are no hands up and therefore can I ask colleagues to use the chat function as to whether they support both of those nominations as they stand? So Chris, Chris White as the priority vice chair and Sharon Taylor as the second vice chair. So if you can indicate for, against or abstain in chat, uh, I'd be grateful. Right, I think that is agreed and that's unanimous. So thank you and uh, congratulations to both uh, Chris and to Sharon on your appointments. Look forward to working with you. So um, I'm going to move on to uh, the next items on the agenda. Agenda item number three is uh, apologies. There are none and uh, I have list. I have um, identified the leaders who are on this call and yes apologies Martin for taking you to North Yorkshire uh, I must have North Yorkshire on my mind for some reason um, fourth item on the agenda are the minutes of our last meeting so whilst this is the first meeting of the growth board as a statutory section 101 joint committee uh, we did um, convene a meeting in our previous designation on the 17th of December. Uh, can I invite members to note the minutes of that board meeting of the 17th of December? And again, if I can just ask you to use chat to indicate for, abstain or against. That's great. That's confirmed and that's unanimous. Thank you. And uh, I did just catch somebody having a biscuit or some crisps in the background there. So um, uh, it might be wise for that person to switch their mic off. Great. Um, agenda item number five is public questions. Understanding order 12. There are no public questions. Agenda item number six was public petitions. Understanding order 13 and no petitions have been submitted. So we come to agenda item number seven on um, uh, our schedule this evening and that's the growth board work program for for 2021 outputs and next steps from the leaders workshop that we held on the 17th of december and uh, patsy the director of Hertfordshire growth patsy dell can i invite you to introduce this item thank you very much chair i'll just make a few opening remarks if that's okay though i'm sure um, everybody's read the paper um, this paper obviously takes the outputs from the workshop with leaders that we held in December and moves them into a, a draft work programme which is appended to uh, the paper at Appendix 1, specifically working up the detail for the, the first six months. Um, since being set up in 2018, the Growth Board journey has really been one of, of developing its ambitions and programme of work, building year on year on the experience as, as we've moved forward and the collaboration uh, that we've seen in, in developing that work program and the contribution that the Growth Board work can make to dealing with the challenges we face in Hertfordshire. Over the last year, the Growth Board's maintained a focus on its work, despite all the councils and the local enterprise partnership being heavily engaged on the COVID response, 
We still continue to engage with government, develop our ambition and offer, raising our profile and reputation nationally. We developed a draft growth and recovery prospectus and we pushed really hard for a growth deal. Clearly, the impact of COVID on government finance meant that, that we weren't successful in securing that ultimately, but we did a huge amount of work uh, in that direction. We established a programme with 11 core projects and we have teams across Hertfordshire working together and taking those projects forward. We've created a programme and project management architecture to support our programme and maintain focus and lend credibility to the seriousness with which we are approaching our programme. We've got a website and a visual identity for the board and we've developed a housing pipeline and a delivery pathway. We've worked on joint planning collaborations in the north and the south and taken those forward. We've matured our governance and established this joint committee. And we've built a system of joint working collaboration across the Hertfordshire Councils and the Local Enterprise Partnership. That's, that's a lot to be proud of in terms of the work that, that happened last year and the years before. And all through this, uh, the events of 2020 kept momentum and maintained that focus, not losing sight of the importance of short, medium and long term issues that we want to continue to, to tackle and deal with together as part of the Growth Board work. And we do recognise the Growth Board's an important role to play in recovery, working in partnership with the LEP so that we keep that focus on economic recovery, growth and business support and align our work to best advantage. And Hertfordshire has really worked together to protect its communities from the virus and we've continued also to work together to protect our communities from the impact of the virus on our economy and that will be a really key focus of our work in 2021 and beyond no doubt. So from the December workshop and included in diagrammatic form in the paper are three priority fee themes that were discussed in the workshop for our work in 2021. Economic recovery, performance and resilience, working together to deliver the homes that Hertfordshire needs and future Hertfordshire. And we've also, through the discussion at the workshop, clarity about where we'd like to be at the end of this year. The draft programme at Appendix A attempts to map that out um, and obviously I'll be grateful for any comments, feedback, suggestions from, from leaders and others uh, at the end of this and it will be a dynamic document that we'll bring back and it will be kept up to, to date and rolled forward. Uh, members will see the categorisation of the current work programmes and the, the new work streams that have been proposed and the milestones that, that we've uh, been able to prepare so far. And there will be some scoping work on the newer work streams because they will need to be formed as we go forward. For example, the investment work stream, an area where we want to really look at how we maximise and leverage investment into Hertfordshire. We're doing some work at the moment that I'd like to put, put to members uh, in, in draft stage that we have a workshop um, in early March similar to there was a there was a very good workshop as part of your development program with CBRE looking at investment opportunities for Hertfordshire we'd like to rerun that session but obviously brought up to date and explore with you and some of the let board members what the opportunities are for investing in Hertfordshire and developing our own investment uh, portfolio and ambition so really testing the leverage around that so that's one of the things that, that we would do offline, separate from the growth board meetings, but be able to continue to take our work programme forward if, if leaders are, are happy with that. And obviously more detail will come out subsequently about that. Um, in addition to the work programme, there will be a forward plan for the, the growth board meetings and also the workshops and briefings that will be an essential part of uh, the coming together of the, of the formal growth board and the rest of the work. Um, Perhaps if I can answer any questions on the detail of the programme now, just one apology. I've referred in a number of places to the April Growth Board meeting. Actually, it's the 30th of March, so I apologise if I've caused any confusion by reference to April, but it is actually the 30th. I was getting ahead of myself, so uh, just to clarify that. Thank you. Patsy, thank you for that. And uh, so, yes, if I can invite uh, colleagues to comment on the programme and uh, uh, seek to clarify any issues that you may have with Patsy. I'm just switching into participants and Chris, I can see your hand up. So Chris, do you want to kick off? 
at this time of the mic on um a couple of places it just says ongoing and i always worry about that word and part not just for semantic reasons but because it is actually very often very vague sometimes uh, officers write ongoing when they mean yeah we're absolutely dealing with it sometimes it means no we're not dealing with it it's in the pending tray i think in this particular case it's got a third meaning which is this is going to happen all year round um, in the two places it occurs. I think we should say that because otherwise it's it, it's um, uh, at best vague and in danger of being ambiguous. Chris, thanks for that. I'm sure Patsy will pick that up. Thank you. Yes. And can I turn to Sharon? Sharon Taylor, the leader of Stevenage Borough Council. Thank you, David. Um, and uh, we're south of North Yorkshire, in case anyone wonders where Stevenage is. Um, just uh, uh, just one point from me. I think it's very clear, the document, and I'm grateful to Patsy for that. Um, it was just under the investment ready. Um, I, I just wondered whether we need a little bit more emphasis on the digital side of things. Um, we have talked about this an awful lot. It's uh, um, probably one of those bits of the uh, growth board work that we uh, would want to make some fairly rapid progress on. And it is absolutely critical um, looking at it from the northeast central point of view, which I, I do. Um, the investment won't come unless we've got that because of the high tech nature of the industries but I'm sure it's true for the rest of the county as well so I just wondered if we could do with a little bit more oomph in the in the digital part of that um, investment ready section. Yes um, absolutely um, and yes if I can just come in Sharon uh, I think it is important to highlight that you know when Patsy was talking about the um, our ambitions in the in the first wave of this and the reference to um, future Hearts. For me, Future Hearts is all about that sort of enhanced placemaking and so issues such as health and well-being, um, uh, decarbonising, sustainability and importantly I think digital is one of those key elements and uh, I know that we have got um, BD UK um, the arm of the Department of Culture and Media and sport beating a beating our door down in terms of wanting to speak to us. And I, Patsy, I don't know if the, any of those meetings have taken place yet, but I, you know, I'd like to see early engagement at this board of um, some of the digital providers and those who've got particular insights on digital uh, in order to influence our strategy. Chair, Chair, I don't know if Neil Hayes is here uh, and could speak to that, but certainly Neil's been leading a digital work stream already with the LEP and with partners involved in that. So I think there have been meetings with BD UK to kick that off, but I don't whether Neil wants to make any comments on that, but I know that work has started and those meetings have been been taking place already. So this is Neil Hayes, the Executive yes. Director of the Hertfordshire Local Enterprise Partnership. Neil, are you able to comment? Yes, happy to chat. Um, yes, we we have initiated a series of discussions um, we formed a small task group at the end of last year um, and we're basically in investigatory mode. So we've, we're speaking to all of the fibre and 5G providers at this, this moment. So we've got we've had discussions with uh, the majority of them. I think there are about three left. Uh, and what we're trying to do is determine what, what their investment profile looks like. What are the barriers to investment? Uh, and where can we accelerate activity? So that process will conclude, and I'm, I'll suggest that pro by probably the end of February, we'll have a draft set of actions, proposed actions, for the how we accelerate the future rollout of, of fibre and broadband. It's been a very really interesting uh, series of discussions, particularly for someone who's not necessarily au fait with the background. Um, but I think there's a, there's already clearly a series of actions that we could start to accelerate for our fibre rollout in the county. And uh, if I can ask you, Neil and Patsy, just to reflect on when it would be appropriate for um, the board as a whole to learn of those and perhaps engage with representatives from uh, the um, uh, the mobile providers or the broadband providers, um, or indeed BD UK itself. Um, in order that we can um, crystallise our own thoughts and views about uh, priorities. Um, Patsy, turning to your point about having a workshop in March, um, I, I'm really keen that we can establish a position in terms of 
um, how we can support infrastructure investment across the county. I am, um, however, uh, you know, I do recognise that I think it was back in November when the national infrastructure strategy was announced. Uh, there was reference to a national infrastructure bank and that this was suggested as a means by which local authorities would be able to um, uh, raise funds uh, for projects. So I have no idea about any further timing on that, although I suspect that the budget might be quite key. And therefore, if we are having our meeting, um, our workshop, then to be scheduling it after the budget on the 3rd of March, I think that would be um, uh, sensible planning. But have you or Neil or Mark heard any more about this National Infrastructure Bank? I, I haven't seen any more about it since then, but we would be having the workshop facilitated by probably someone from CBRE or a similar organisation who should have that, that national picture and real understanding of the development of the government initiatives such as that ab absolutely should be uh, second nature and their area of expertise. So we would want to bring them in to make the workshop as meaningful and up to date on everything that's happening uh, as we could possibly make it for you. That's great. Thanks, Patsy. Are there any other comments? If on this item, if not, yes, we David. Have, uh, sorry, um, it's Mark. Mark, sorry. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I just think as well as looking at the infrastructure bank, we just need to get ourselves prepared for the levelling up, whatever we can get from the levelling up fund and from uh, UK Share Prosperity. Uh, I think, you know, just to sit back and, and listen to the media that says it'll only go north of the Watford Gap, I think is a mistake on our behalf. Uh, and anything we should do now, we should take all this into consideration at the same time. I think we also, with the with some of the comments that have been made in and around by sectors of state and others, you know, we need to sort out amongst ourselves the the division of activity between the growth board, the lab, and so on going forward for some of these bidding activities, so that we make best use of the skills and experience we've got in the county. Yeah, um, absolutely okay. support that, Mark. Um, there have been uh, one or two comments by the uh, Secretary of State for um, um, uh, the Ministry of uh, Housing, Communities and Local Government uh, that he does expect to see the um, local authorities have a more significant role in terms of uh, the distribution of the UK Shared Prosperity Fund, but uh, we await uh, that with interest. Um, potentially that is a major source of funding for um, uh, the growth board uh, and obviously I'm very keen that we support those initiatives that have uh, historically been supported by the um, local enterprise partnership as well so there is a level of uncertainty there which I find um, a bit disconcerting at the moment and do rest assured that when I have contacts with the um, uh, the Secretary of State I am pressing him for early clarity um, because there's a lot hanging on how those funds are going to be distributed and, uh, and made available uh, going forward. Yes, we met with Treasury officials in the network nationally on Friday, uh, and I think it's worth recognising that if you look at the, for example, at the Getting Building Fund, the, the, the size of the, the funnel hopper for projects that came into the 38 LEPs that were then, were then reviewed, screened out by the LEP executive before they then reach LEP boards, which of course local authorities are well represented on, before they then go into the centre. Um, you know, we've got a tried and trusted joined up process for this between us, including you. Um, and that if you take that away and allow direct bidding without any intelligent uh, um, streaming and filtering and qualification beforehand, uh, you know, Treasury and the, uh, the cities and local growth team are going to be awash with um, very disconnected, very mixed quality bids. And so I think there is some practical steps here. If I can tell you when we talked about this was the numbers the Treasury guys blanched. So there is some work to be done here of a practical sort uh, over the next few months, I think. Thank you. Uh, it's useful to have that, Mark, uh, that insight. Um, 
because um, I've, I've got a meeting with the Secretary of State tomorrow and um, uh, it's good to have that insight. I mean, the other thing I would that you and I have talked about is that um, whilst the levelling up fund has been described as a four billion pound fund, the amount of money that's available for the that's coming exactly. financial year is not a lot and compares very poorly with the um, uh, the get building fund uh, that was um, mm -hmm. made available in this financial year. Yeah, and you'll also be aware that, to be honest, the comments that he made about the quality of laps date back to 2018. You know, 36 out of 38 laps at last year's APR were good or better. One's in special measures, which has been rebuilt up in the north. The other is London, which for accounting purposes can't meet the delivery requirement in terms of the way it's measured in terms of spend. So effectively, 37 out of 38 laps were measured by his department as being more than acceptable. So to be reading, I'm afraid, with absolutely zero engagement since appointment in 2019, that stuff going back to uh, a 2018 review of laps is extremely frustrating for all of us, including the support that we've enjoyed from all of the local uh, authority members sat around this table. So. Yeah, we're going to do a, have a constructive discussion about this because it's just one of those things we have to deal with. But it's just a bit of a shame. Really. Yeah. OK, thanks for that, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Uh, uh, Maurice, you've indicated the leader of Hartmere Borough Council. Thank you very much and, and well done. Congratulations to yourself and to uh, Sean and Chris on your appointments. Uh, we are on good hands. Um, can I? Uh, it's more of a, a process point of view. If if the uh, local elections are to go ahead, uh, at the beginning of May, and at the government, at the moment, the government is indicating they might, although that's under review. I just wonder to what extent we um, have issues around holding a meeting on the 30th of March, in which is what's called the Perda period for those who are watching this. At which time it becomes slightly more complicated if we do have to put uh, out uh, information about uh, what we're doing and who can be quoted, etc. Uh, because of the, the rules around elected members and PERDA. So um, it's more a case of I don't want to slow things down. I want to get things keep keeping as fast as they can. But at the same time, um, it becomes difficult if you're putting out information during that period. It says an inside source or a, or a member of staff said, well, it actually needs to be the, the chairman or vice chairman, etc. So I just we need to be aware of that period as and when the elections are called, because there'll be five weeks where perhaps our work cannot be publicised in the way that it needs to be. Yeah, an important point, Morris. Thank you for that. And I'm sure uh, Patsy will take advice um, uh, as necessary. Excellent. Um, if there is nothing further on this item, we've got the recommendation at 5.1 that the board approve the work programme and priorities for 2021 and the new and existing work streams contained wherein. Uh, that was subject to Chris's point about um, how ongoing is treated in um, uh, in some of those Gantt charts that uh, we've seen. So if I can ask you please to vote again using chat and um, for, against or abstain. So that's confirmed and uh, is unanimous. So thank you for that. We'll move on to agenda item number eight, the growth fund uh, budget report. And again, Patsy is going to present this. Patsy. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this, this paper sets out the way the growth board growth fund has been deployed over the last three years and recommendations for the next financial year. Uh, members will recall, um, and Chief Executive obviously that the Growth Board Growth Fund comes from the retained business rates pilot that the Hertfordshire Council's bid for in 2018-19. And the Growth Board Growth Fund was bid for specifically as a top sliced fund that would be held jointly by all the councils and used for growth investment growth purposes. And it's, it's obviously been used by the Growth Board to enable the work it's been doing uh, without needing financial direct financial support from any of the partners. And you'll see from the paper that the total amount that has gone in the growth board fund before obviously the drawdowns that we've made on it uh, was 4.2 million. Looking at the budget profile for the coming year, um, the budget really is to cover the operating costs of the board, including 
the joint committee that we've obviously just established, staffing costs, support for the, the projects and the programmes, and all the other things that we've been doing that are, that are set out there in the paper, and obviously, which I can answer questions on. Uh, new for 2021, and reflecting the previous discussion and the workshop in December, was about the priorities in the Growth Board programme this year, and how, in the absence of uh, having received a, a growth deal or having been able to secure that, we keep our work moving forward and make sure things like the new work stream for investment um, are able to move forward at the pace and with the momentum we need them to. So I'm recommending, uh, with the support of your chief execs, uh, that a budget of up 250,000 is made available. Obviously, it won't be drawn down unless it's needed to be spread amongst those projects so that we can keep momentum or start momentum and move those programme and key projects onto where we need them to be. Um, and it's it's important for our contribution to recovery that we're able to do that. I think particularly as well around uh, the affordable housing, the, the accelerated housing work stream where we're tr still trying to secure a growth deal. We want to explore becoming a strategic partner with Homes England. These are avenues that will be routes to potential funding. So it's important for us to keep moving with that. Housing construction, placemaking also contributes to recovery. So there are areas where we, through our activities, we can genuinely help recovery within Hertfordshire. Um, we want to uh, support uh, lead leaders in the north of the county are having a discussion about how we take forward the northeast and central joint planning collaboration. Clearly, the funding that the Southwest Hearts Group enjoyed from MHCLG in previous years as capacity support for strategic planning is no longer available. So this is a way that the Growth Board should be able to support that work with the match funding that partners hopefully are, will consider and will put in to enable that joint, joint planning work to continue. So it is recommended that, that leaders support having that funding available to, to help these projects move forward. Um, obviously, as I've said, it won't be drawn down unless needed. We would look to the corridor programme boards and the chief execs coordinating group to help with the bidding and distribution process. So to make sure that we are um, targeting the right projects. But I think there are some clear ones that, that we need to maintain momentum with uh, in the existing and the new programme. So the recommendation is obviously that you note uh, the paper and ask for your support with making that 250,000 uh, available if needed for the priority project set out in the paper. So thanks, Patsy. Uh, colleagues, any uh, questions or clarification or um, points that you wish to make in relation to this item? Uh, Martin. Uh, yes, thank you, David. Um, certainly, um, I, th I think this is an area, obviously, before we get the uh, um, a, a growth deal or anything like that, that will become um, a ma matter of some um, concern as to how we fund it. And I'm happy to uh, note the report. One particular concern, though, um, and it may be a more detailed one, um, a lot of the work of the Growth Board is funded by in-kind uh, uh, work by each council, and that's understood that we need to do that. Um, but, but I believe there has been some discussion of what should or shouldn't or indeed has or hasn't been um, recharged by councils in, in terms of the detail. Um, I think this is something we don't need to explore now directly, but I would ask that offline officers have a discussion and report back to us with some of the details to our next meeting uh, to make sure that uh, we all understand what we have agreed to and what we haven't agreed to. So I, I think that's important. But I know from our discussion in North East and Central that, uh, that, that we've all got major concerns in terms of if we are asked to dig into our own pockets. Um, and we're doing our budget um, cabinet this evening and well aware of all the constraints that we have. So I, I think this needs to be taken forward sensitively. Um, so um, just with that request for a report back to our next meeting on some of the details, uh, I, I'd appreciate. Thank you, Martin. Uh, Patsy, are you content to um, respond to that? Absolutely. I, I think I'm aware of the, the detail that, that has raised uh, this point and I can provide kind of a full, full explanation on that. Any other part of the 
the, the budget um, note uh, that is of interest. So I'll, I'll pick up with chief execs offline uh, and, and provide that report next time. Excellent. Thanks, Patsy. Are there any other comments in relation to the budget? If not, can we move to the recommendation that leaders are asked to note the report and agree the proposed budget commitments for 2021-22, including the new 250,000 priority project funding uh, as set out in the appendix to the report? Um, can I ask you to indicate whether you are for, against or abstain? So I think that's agreed and that's unanimous. So uh, thank you, colleagues. Thank you. So we're going to move on to agenda item number nine, and that is the report and presentation from Lucy Gravatt on the Growth Board um, Communication Strategy and Plan for 2021. Lucy, welcome. Long time no see. Thank you, David. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I Happy can just share my... <laughs> and to you too. If I can just share my screen and then I will uh, talk you through the communication strategy and protocols. Sorry, I just see in a few minutes. That's okay. Here we go. Okay. Can you see that? I think it's just coming through. But not yet. Apologies. Here we go. So we can see your desktop, um, Lucy, with the um, uh, with the video cast on it. Yes, I can too. Unfortunately, it's just not loading quickly enough. It's just been rather slow. Oh, it's just coming up now, I think, so you should have that. Yeah. Can you all see that now? Yeah, it's come up in presentation mode. That's that's excellent, Lucy. Thank Great, you. Great, thank you. Sorry about that delay. So I've been asked to give an update on Hartford's growth strategy and protocols, which are available to view in the Growth Board website agenda item nine, appendix A. So this strategy outlines the results that the partnership aims to achieve and how effective communications and engagement will support the achievement of those outcomes. So through our communication strategy, the Hertfordshire Growth Board's uh, outside communications should at all times be open and honest, proactive, responsive, timely, accessible to all users and smart. So our core communications principle is to raise the profile of the work of the Growth Board, its aims and achievements in driving growth and economic recovery. Under this principle are a set of core communications objectives which are set out here and these are primarily to support the delivery of the key priorities identified in the growth board's terms of reference and MOU, to support dialogue with government and investors and the growth challenges and opportunities affecting Hertfordshire, to further strengthen the credibility and reach the growth board among key stakeholders in Hertfordshire and neighbouring areas, to help the Growth Board achieve the highest standards of openness and transparency, and to be viewed as an exemplar of delivery, a leader of good practice in the successful delivery of growth-related projects and priorities. So in order to deliver on our objectives, 
We will build high quality engagement and dialogue by leveraging the power of our growth board partners and the networks. We'll enhance our reach and understanding of what we're trying to achieve using internal communication channels for everyone to feel part of the collective effort. We'll continue to strengthen our brand by gaining positive recognition of our role and delivering growth led activities which benefit Hertfordshire. I will develop growth board campaigns of influence, positively impacting behaviours and decisions of key influencers, particularly among our key audience, such as government. So our target audiences fall into two groups, and I've listed these here. So an external list directed at government, strategic partnerships, business, business civic bodies, charities, education providers, think tanks, investors, and other ex interested external bodies, and then there's our internal list where there's an existing buy-in through membership of the growth board and whose networks form a critical channel of marketing reach for the growth board, ensuring information is disseminated ge geographically and that there's feedback to the Hertfordshire growth board. So how do we reach these audiences? So determining, and I've listed these here, are key channels of reach. Determining the channels through which to share our communications or campaigns is essential to work out the right methodology to get the right message to the right audience in the best way and at the best time. So these are listed here and I've also included the Hertfordshire Growth Board's joint governance arrangements which enable it to extend its network and reach exponentially via its partners. This is one of its most critical channels of communication as it provides excellent access to the business market as well as the local knowledge and perspective to enable a vital feedback loop, which underpins the growth board's responsive decision making through the inclusion of partner and grassroots engagement. That is why I've placed partner communications as so important to the work of the growth board. So I'd now like to hear just quickly go through partner communications and some of the organisational messages about how we want to be perceived. Here I've, I've put down the proposed mission statement. This is already carried on the Growth Board website, and I would like to seek your agreement to roll out this message onto partners' websites. Underpinning this statement is our common values centered on shared progress, responsible growth, and active stewardship. So the communication strategy and protocols sets out a series of guidelines which are intended to codify the approach to communications to be taken through the Hertfordshire Growth Board and to make clear the expectations of its partners. So these guidelines apply to publicity, social media posts, digital web, branding, as well as media inquiries and requests. And within that is, an, is how we're going to be managing our collective communications and the success of the Growth Board depends upon Growth Board partners working collectively to promote areas of common interest. So there is an expectation that comms leads will work in the open, sharing communications and materials, but, where it, but only where it is practical and relevant to do so. And to support this, the Hertfordshire Growth Board communications team will maintain a high level forward plan and share the branding guidelines and digital assets with partner communication leads. The strategy also extends to social media as a key channel of reach. In order for us to achieve the goals set out here, there is an expectation that communication leads will adhere to the protocol set out in the document. And in so doing, this provides a two-way mechanism to share success more widely and amplify partner-led growth activities across the county. So what is our criteria for success? Well, quite simply, it's, to, it's for improvements in Hertfordshire Growth Board's profile. It's to increase the strength of the Hertfordshire Growth Board brand. It's the breadth and depth of Hertfordshire Growth Board's engagement with target audiences. And it's also outcomes and decisions made by the target audience. So it's influence, behaviour and change that truly contribute to Hertfordshire Growth Board's strategic priorities. And finally, I would like to share with you this communications dashboard. 
So our newsletters, the stakeholder bulletin, will follow the reporting cycle of the board. Key national milestones will be communicated with the growth board response where appropriate. To support partner communications, we will hold regular briefings with our comms colleagues, sharing and resharing content via our network of channels. There are opportunities too for much greater profile raising, whether it's positioning Hearts IQ as at the forefront of New Year's construction, the voice of authority webinars one year on, or building future resilience in the county's response to the climate emergency. Throughout, we will continue to provide internal briefings to the Growth Board, support wider stakeholder engagement via events, sponsorship and PR opportunities, and ensure we continue to build in our strong digital presence via videos, blogs, blogs and infographics. And that's it for me. Lucy, thank you. And um, colleagues, can I invite any questions or uh, points that you wish to discuss with Lucy? And I'm going to start with Linda and then Sharon. So Linda Hazy, the leader of East Hearts um, District Council. Um, thank you. I've got um, two commenty questions, really. One is um, involvement of our comms team in our uh, local authorities. Most of them are absolutely up to their necks in COVID vaccination and everything like that. So I think we need to be very conscious that the comms teams are very, very, very stretched at the moment in terms of what we do. And it has to be very easy and very simple, um, but obviously it needs to be consistent and um, gets the right message out over a long period, over the longer period of time. The other thing is, um, I can't see any mention of our MPs. And I just wondered if we should, how we, if we have thoughts on how we need to involve them, because in many cases, we will need support from them for some of the things that we may wish to take forward. Um, and I think that would be a useful piece of thought from you, Lucy, as to a sort of programme of engagement, you know, gins, coffees, teas, that sort of thing, as, or whether we invite them to board meetings as an observer or how we actually help them understand what we are trying to achieve and want to achieve together for the best of Hertfordshire. Lucy. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, just going back on those two points. So I absolutely agree on partner communications. We want to make life easier for our local authority comms colleagues, not more difficult. We actually had planned to hold a, a comms workshop um, in the run up to Christmas. And we actually decided that that was just not the right time. It was not helpful. So what I've done is I've actually th these strategy and protocols have actually been developed for our partners, actually. But to, again, to make life easier, we are just giving them a boilerplate that can be used um, and at all times they'd be guided by us rather than them actually having to call on them for additional support. In terms of the MPs, I have listed them as a sort of one of our target audiences and they're absolutely one of our key um, channels of reach. So but I, that's a really useful um, point you raised about inviting them to the meetings and, I, and that's one I'll certainly take away and we'll have some thought, but thank you. Mm. OK, sorry, I must have missed that, but it, it just seems that they are um, intrinsic into helping them understand what we are trying to do. Because if we, we are all well aware, if someone decides that they're not interested in what we're doing, they can cause a lot of problems. And I think they're particularly important in terms of underscoring some of our ambitions when it comes to um, uh, the pecking order in Whitehall and uh, whether we can call on their support uh, for what we want to do, Linda. So it's a very it's a very important point. I'm going to go to Sharon and then uh, Lewis Cocking. Sharon. Thank you, David. And I'm glad Linda said that and not me. Um, so uh, thank you um, for, for that point. And can I just um, sorry, David, uh, welcome Matt to the meeting. Matt's been having a grilling with uh, MHCLG about the Stevenage Town deal this afternoon and he's just arrived at our meeting. So um, I hope it wasn't too se severe for him, but uh, he's just arrived here. So welcome, Matt. Um, two points from me, really, Lucy. Um, one is around um, I'm pleased to see um, health very firmly embedded in what um, what we plan, you know, as key stakeholders for us and 
course, that's got even more important over this last 12 months. I know public health is really, to some extent, is part of the county council and linked to the county council. But I do think it's worth, in the current circumstances, specifically mentioning public health um, as being absolutely key to the work we're doing. We, we do, you know, we're doing so much around public health and it will be so important going forward um, in some of the projects we're doing. Um, I think it's worth having that in there specifically. Um, now, um, the, the other point I wanted to make was the discussions around the uh, North East Central um, Joint Strategic Plan have made me realise that the um, we will have a, maybe not quite yet, but we will in the near future have a very uh, definite uh, need a process for engagement with residents. And I'm not talking about communication to residents, I'm talking about engagement with them around some of the projects and plans we're taking forward. And I, to me, this um, it, it felt uh, a very comms based strategy, which is fine. But I think the engagement part of that, the kind of two way process of working with our residents um, uh, could do with some some thought around how we're going to do that and whether we need a separate community engagement strategy or whether it needs embedding within this. I'm not sure, but I'd just like us to I've got no problem with what's in the strategy, but I think it would benefit from us doing some thinking around the engagement with residents, because if we don't do that, then, you know, the first time we come up against uh, an issue, um, people will rightly ask us, well, you didn't ask me. So um, I think we do need to do that going forward. And I, ju I just reflect, um, Sharon, on a couple of things, um, because that um, that is important. But um, we can obviously draw on the work um, that's been done in um, uh, in the southwest, uh, where, as I understand it, because of lockdown, they've been actually quite successful in uh, in terms of online engagement um, uh, in a way that uh, perhaps uh, we wouldn't have done if it's uh, if we had not been faced and by the constraints of lockdown. And then I think some of the communication that the Harlow Gilston Garden Town and Hemel Garden communities uh, have been doing um, are um, useful pointers to some of the engagement that you, know, you we sh collectively should be achieving for the, uh, the North East and Central um, plan. Yeah. And we've got some useful uh, good practice as well through virtual visitor centre for the town centre, those sorts yeah. of things. So um, the point, I think we've got, all this, you know, we've got a lot of good practice around the county, but pulling it together for this purpose, I think is quite important. I also personally, I, it, it may be, it is semantic, so um, a nod to Chris there, but um, the, uh, the term anchored, I'm not sure that's, um, that's a generally understood term uh, for uh, members of the public. I hear it a lot because of community wealth building, but um, maybe a different term, key partners or public yeah. sector partners or something would be better. Yeah. And then your point about um, public health. Um, I, um, you know, the, the term I'd prefer to use is um, is either health and well-being or population health. Um, I think, uh, you know, and those do feature quite strongly um, in this notion of enhanced placemaking that we were talking about earlier. So, yeah, um, it's absolutely, you know, it's, it's of significant importance. And, and indeed, you know, going forward, I think we do need to ask ourselves to what extent we might want to extend the growth board to other partners and uh, health, um, by which I mean, uh, particularly now the NHS, um, and the integrated uh, care system that is emerging in Hertfordshire might be one candidate for um, um, partners that we actually want to draw into this uh, mechanism at an early stage. So, thanks, Sharon. Um, I'm going to move on to um, Lewis Cocking, the leader of the borough of Broxbourne, and then um, Maurice Bright. L Lewis. Thank you. Um... David, um, I've got uh, one question and it mainly focuses around engagement with our residents. So if we if we look at the strategy in front of us, so section 1.15 uh, has got channels, which is on page seven, and obviously that's heavily focused around social media and online engagement. Then if we look at appendix 
uh, one, which has got um, a table on it on page 12, we do see residents mentioned in there again and some channels of what we're going to engage with our residents with. But it's all, again, focused very much on virtual and online social media. And I get that's the way we have to communicate now, now with the lockdown and coronavirus. And obviously, when we move out of this, we've learned, particularly in Broxbourne, still a lot of our residents are not online. I mean, we've personally done five coronavirus leaflets to make sure everyone's got the phone numbers and update them. So I'm just concerned if we want to take our residents with us, that we need to bear in mind that not everybody is online and we can't forget those people that are not that are not online. So it's just to flag up that we need some sort of strategy or leaflet or document around how we're going to collect the views of those people, because I'm, I'm conscious that they could be forgotten. Thank you. Thanks, Lewis. Lucy, do you want to comment on that? No, I think it's a really valid point. And actually, at the, moment, at the point of writing the strategy, I think I was very much with the COVID lens on, but absolutely, that's something that we will we will be taking forward. So thank you, Lewis. And I think, Lewis, there, the uh, the links, of course, to the uh, the borough's comms team uh, and the all of the um, district and uh, borough comms teams uh, is going to be important in terms of having that reach down to our residents. Um, Morris. Yes, thank you. Uh, actually, I'm following off from what Lewis said. Um, uh, most of us, I imagine, still have some kind of uh, magazine that goes out or publication that goes out to our residents in one shape or form. We still have in Hartsmere three times a year that one goes out um, physically because, as Lewis rightly says, not everyone is online or is able to respond online. And again, corporate comms will be extraordinarily important to help get that message out across so we can ask all the people the sort of similar questions depending on what's being proposed for the area, but at least we can garner uh, views that way as well. Um, I think it was just to add to what was being said before about members of parliament. Um, I know that Lucy mentioned they're part of the audience. I think an audience sits and watches. I think they actually need to be part of the discussions and be participatory. Um, we need the buy-in. We need to take them on the journey. We happen at the moment to have a couple of, of, uh, of government ministers. I mean, that can, that can change over time. We might end up with less, we might end up with more, but reality is that bearing in mind where we are both positioned um, physically, geographically, uh, as well as politically with those um, um, MPs, it would be useful to have them uh, inside and being able to to uh, participate rather than just watch. Absolutely, Morris. Um, Linda. Thank you, if you don't mind me coming back. I was just wondering whether we should also draw up a list of institutions or groups that we might want to go and do presentations to so do we want to go and talk to the cham um, chamber of commerce do we want to go and talk to the health and well-being board a whole range of things where perhaps we do share it amongst us we have standard presentations again it's getting that message out uh, and orientate it to why they need to be involved with this yeah i'd certainly support that linda yeah and um uh, I mean, Lucy had some um, uh, webinar type um, events in that um, uh, in that plan. Uh, I think there's a whole series of perhaps more ad hoc things that we should be thinking about and uh, and uh, obviously doing this uh, hand in hand with the local enterprise partnership, given the round tables that they hold by sector and by geography, uh, um, uh, etc. And actually, Mark, um, you've got your hand up. Mark, do you want to comment? Yeah, I just wanted to support the the um, opportunity to engage with the business community in all its forms. You know, we're well connected with um, a uh, you know a good number of the business representative organisations. I think we could do some uh, work through growth hubs to push out messages. You know, with all of the, the the changes that are happening in the way in which funding is being allocated, I think keeping the business community. Um, engaged is, uh, is, a, is a very important thing for this group to do and that's obviously a key role for us to play here. Yeah and um, you know the other um, group of um, um, private sector representatives that I, uh, I know will want to talk to us and we will want to talk to them uh, is the developer community uh, both in terms of um, uh, underpinning confidence that they have in Hertfordshire, uh, but then also in terms of our expectations, whether that's placemaking or, or whatever. Um, so, uh, and that's a, a, a group of stakeholders, which I think we can probably readily um, 
uh, engage with. OK, um, so Lucy shared with us um, her presentation, her strategy, and in particular um, that statement that she shared with us on the slide. Um, can I take you colleagues to the recommendations at 3.1 and 3.2 on the agenda, namely that leaders approve the communication strategy and protocols and note the a note and agree to the rollout of the organizational messages set out in section two of the document and the document and that leaders approve the 2021 communication plans as attached to appendix B subject to those comments and that feedback that we've given to Lucy. So again, if in chat you can indicate whether you are for or against or abstaining. Stephanie will feed back the results. And that's confirmed. That's great. Thank you, Stephanie. And thank you, Lucy. Great to see you again. We're going to move on to um, item number 10 on our agenda. OK, we've been going for an hour. Um, colleagues, we've got a couple of updates. Um, rather than papers to consider before we conclude our meeting. Um, I'd welcome your views. Go to the end or take a break. Happy to continue? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I can. Linda's happy to continue. That's fine. Excellent. <laughs> OK, so That's agenda great. item number 10, the Growth Board Work Programme and Corridor Programme Board updates. Patsy, are you going to kick this off? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, these are our wave one projects as we've referred to them. They're led and overseen by um, our uh, political leads on the, the programme board. So I'm going to hand over to uh, report back. There is the summary updates obviously attached as a, Appendix One. They will be circulated to each meeting. So Growth Board has oversight of all of those projects and the new ones will be incorporated within that. In terms of commenting on them, if uh, Councillor Hazy and Councillor Taylor are happy. I'll defer to you to to present um, it, whichever order you're you're most happy with. Linda, are you ready to go? Uh, well, no. I was going to say since we started in Yorkshire, let's work our way down the country <laughs> and, and go to Stevenage first. Sharon, uh, Sharon might have had a technical problem. I think she may have dropped out of the meeting. So I'm going to go. She to... just come back in. Actually, she did, but I see she's re-entered. Go so ahead. Right, I'm, I'm, in that case, we're, I'm quite happy to carry on. Um, <clears throat> no, um, the, the Southern Corridor is is doing well. Um, the creative um, industry sector, the report is, um, Morris has done some fantastic work in starting to pull all of that together. Um, obviously, the housing, acceleration in housing um, is due very much. We are there and ready to go. It's more a question of making sure that the government is there and ready to support us in doing it. Um, <clears throat> Gilston number of planning applications are pending and the mass rapid transport, I believe, goes out for consultation later this um, in the next couple of months. So um, projects are motoring. Oh, sorry. That was an awful pun. It wasn't meant to be there, um, but um, no, everyone's been contributing and it's a it's a it's a good area. Good group of people, I would say. Thanks, Linda. And um, I mean, one of the things I'd, I'd just mentioned in relation to some of the thinking that's going on on mass rapid trans uh, transport, um, you know, at the moment, this is very much a uh, Hearts County Council project. You know, ultimately, that needs to become a growth board project. It needs to be something that we own and um, argue for and support and um, uh, hopefully see it delivered. Um, so I just I just highlight that. Um, obviously, it's been given a lot of attention in the county council at the moment. But yes, at some stage uh, later this year, we will begin um, a consultation process and begin to flesh out um, what this may look and feel like and where are the key nodes on um, an east-west route that it needs to go to etc cetera, etc cetera, and how that might be achieved. Um, yeah, and, and so I mean I was on a call earlier with um, <clears throat> Derek Ashley and um, Kevin Bentley were also on it um, and again they were starting to talk about how can this 
then link into a potential project from Essex in, on, along the A120. So I think this has actually got really strong drivers to make it work. Um, and Derek's also come up with an acronym as you would expect him to. But that's up to him to share with you. <laughs> yes, um, it, um, you may not need too much imagination to think what, what sort of um, uh, focus it might have. Um, or nomenclature it might have. So, OK, thanks, Linda. Um, Sharon. Yeah, apologies for the technical difficulties. I got thrown out after I voted. I don't know whether that was significant, but uh, I did vote for it as well. Anyway, um, the, uh, just to give a brief update from North East Central, we met on the 11th of January. We did have a very good uh, report from Colin Haig um, on the business case for the Joint Strategic Plan. But uh, as the discussion uh, took place, it was very clear that uh, for some of our colleagues in Welling and, and North Hearts particularly, um, the issue of getting their local plans signed off um, and some concerns that were raised about the district and borough financial contributions uh, to fund the key programme were, were quite, um, you know, there were quite, quite a lot of discussion around that. And there were also some uh, matters to consider with regards to the connection between the joint strategic plan and the new settlements uh, programmes. So, um, with that mentioned, I'm very grateful that we, uh, we've signed off earlier today the 40,000 contribution of match funding to support the NEC uh, JSP work, because I think that will significantly help uh, the discussions that we're having. Um, but we, we, we are having to tread very carefully on this uh, to make sure we don't, um, we don't cause any, any issues elsewhere. Um, so to move matters forward, um, we uh, arranged for chief planners and chief executives to meet as soon as possible to scope out and agree which, if any, of the proposed elements of work can be moved forward collectively straight away. Um, obviously, uh, we all want to secure a solution that works for everybody. That's really important and um, key to the success in the South and Southwest has been taking everybody along with them. So um, it's very important that we do that properly and thoroughly. From a Stevenage perspective, I'm very supportive of working together to develop the joint strategic plan. Um, and if uh, significant investments be made in the process, it would be uh, appropriate to consider a statutory local plan to allocate strategic locations, um, supported by, of course, a district level plan for us to plan for and control developments within our own districts and boroughs. Um, beyond this, uh, we ran through the programme updates, noting in particular that some good progress has been made in scoping the science and technology strand, which I'm very pleased to see. Great progress and, um, you know, uh, huge thanks to uh, Jeff Stack and to the Local Enterprise Partnership who have uh, been very supportive in getting this done. And also the work that's being done to reinvigorate our town centres. So some great work done on that project too. So I hope that's helpful. Um, while I have the floor, can I um, thank you all and especially David and the Hearts County Council team and, and Mark and the LEP team for the support you've given us uh, in regards to getting the holding direction lifted for the SG1. We did hear last week uh, fantastic news and now we're able to crack on. Unfortunately, we've lost three months, uh, thanks to uh, somebody who will be nameless. And we're aiming to do so at some pace now with um, a report setting out how we wish to accelerate SG1 being planned for our March 2021 executive meeting. So um, thank you. Um, thank you again, David and Mark in particular for the support you've given us with the Towns Fund bid. As I say, Matt's been in the meeting with our Development Board Chairman, Adrian Hawkins, uh, just prior to Hearts Growth Board with Emran Meehan and Jenny Dibden from MHCLG regarding the £50 million bid we've got. He had quite a grilling, but I think you would have for £50 million, so that's uh, that's not surprising. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to hearing uh, how that went uh, later on. So thank you all very much, all of you, for your support with all of that. It's, you know, um, you say, David, and I, I of course I agree with you, uh, what's, uh, what's good for Stevenage is good for Hertfordshire. And, you know, these projects are really, really important to the future of not just of our town, but of our county. Yeah, thank you for that, Sharon. And um, uh, hopefully I'll be able to attend the development board meeting on Thursday and it'd be good to um, have an update from Adrian and uh, Matt at that. And uh, and it would be good to understand as well when uh, their, their understanding of when a decision is likely to be taken by the government and when we might expect to hear. 
So, um, any questions for or points for Sharon and Linda? If not, we will note their comments. Oh, Patsy, just one thing. Uh, I hate to um, focus in on sort of uh, micro detail, but on the um, the rag status of um, the northeast central joint planning, um, it's showing amber but says green. Yes. Apologies for that. I'll make sure that that's tidied up. That's OK. It is amber. Go okay. with the colour. So uh, I won't take that to a vote. I'm assuming that everybody is content that um, uh, to note the update. And then let's move to agenda item number 11, standing items. And Chris is going to provide an update on the South West Hearts Joint Plan. Yeah, we're just about to put out a press release uh, jointly agreed uh, any time yeah. this week saying where we're up to uh, and trying to get some traction uh, as to the concept. Um, I'm not saying we lack traction, certainly we've engaged with the public. But we do need to report back saying we have engaged and what the outcome was. Uh, just for safety's sake, I would prefer this item to be described by its full title as Joint Strategic Plan. Uh, to stop uh, hares running, particularly in parts of St Albans or indeed in Harpenden. Uh, so, uh, but uh, yeah, so that's where we are at the moment, which is just reporting back to the public. Great, thanks, Chris. Uh, any points for Chris? If not, um, if there aren't any, I will assume that we can simply note that. And so, the date of the next meeting is, as Patsy was saying, is Tuesday, the thirtieth of March. Um, uh, obviously just reflecting on the, we may need to reflect on the PERP issue and, but the intention is to have that um, leaders workshop ahead of that on the whole question of um, uh, infrastructure investment. So that then brings us to any other business? Colleagues, any other business that anybody wants to raise at this time? If not, uh, that concludes the first of our meetings as a statutory um, Section 101 Joint Committee. Um, it feels a little bit different, but not that different from our previous meetings. So, uh, look, thank you for your contributions as ever. And uh, we obviously look forward to working with each other over the next few months as the strategy and the communication plan uh, in particular uh, gather momentum and we address a very ambitious uh, agenda for the year ahead. So thanks for your time this afternoon. See you again soon. Cheers. Thank, Thank you, David. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.